What's going on guys? So today we are out here at Explore USA RV Supercenter in Corpus Christi, Texas, and we are going to take a look at this, I'm going to say so close to being amazing, free solo compact travel trailer. There's some things I'm going to comment about this unit that I hope the folks at Free Solo listen because I think if they made these little changes, this thing would probably be like the number one selling compact travel trailer on the market. So to hear what those are, hang tight. I'll be right back. All right, before we get going, let's take a look at the numbers on this unit. So this is gonna have a gross vehicle weight rating of 3,320 pounds, super lightweight, and 925 pounds worth of cargo capacity. It's gonna have a single axle, which is rated at 3,000 pounds. So yeah, you can tow this with a lot of vehicles. Now, of course, you wanna make sure you have both the payload capacity from a tongue weight perspective and the towing capacity to be able to handle it because this is still relatively long and tall for most vehicles. So if you're gonna to try to tow this behind like a, you know, a wagon or a, a compact SUV, you're not gonna have fun. You're gonna be very dangerous and it will probably exceed what that's capable of. But if you have like a Ford Explorer, Dodge Durango, um, maybe full-size SUV, half tons, things like that, this should be no problem. Just again, be very careful and make sure that your specific vehicle is equipped with the towing package and has the capability, both in terms of capacity and towing capacity, to be able to handle something like this. A lot of people may not realize that even though they may have something like a Durango, there's a big difference between a Durango with a towing package and one without it. And most of them don't come with it. So just keep that in mind. Anyways, we're going to start with the inside of this unit. Then we're going to come out and take a look at the outside. Because right off the bat, when we look at the inside of this unit, I think you're probably going to be able to identify what my suggestions are going to be for the folks over at Free Solo. So let's hop inside of this Free Solo DIN. All right, so you got a steel entry step here. No friction hinge door, at least it doesn't feel like there's one. That would be a nice addition to it. So friction hinge door, I'd put like an aluminum step here, maybe two steps. It's not that it's a very tall step, but two steps just make it a little bit more convenient to get into. But as we enter, and I don't wanna hit my head up here because I've done that on these units before. Let's pan around the interior here real quick. And I want you to see if you can guess, before we get to it, what my suggestion is going to be. What do you think it is? It's a cool wet bath, by the way. Right here. This is your dinette. When you are eating lunch or eating dinner, you just get back from your hike or you're about to go on your hike. You're at Yellowstone. You're at Teton, you're at the Rockies, you're, you know, I don't know where you may be, but you're at it. What do you want to be looking at while you're eating your food besides your food? Maybe your spouse, right? But you have no windows here at all. This to me is an atrocity. This should be something that they should fix immediately. Big window up front. Big window right here. Not a small little dinky window, but a big window right here. Big window right here. Small window right here. Four windows. Four. One, two, three, four. I guess I have one, two, three, four. Big, big, big front window right here would be absolutely amazing. I mean, that is what you want right here. Maybe some storage above it, some nets, but having a huge window right here. Not, again, not one of those tiny little dinky ones like on that Olympia right there, that little window right there. No. Maybe like what we see on that Winnebago right there. Put that window right here, right here big window up front. But you know what? Give me three out of four. One window right here, one big window right here, and one right here, because I know that the front windshields can be, you know, hit or miss, right? You can have leakage problems or hard to replace. They can break, whatever. Big window right here, big window right here, and a medium-sized small window right here. That would totally change the feel of this RV inside. Uh, what do you guys think? Leave a comment below. Is that what you all thought? Is that the same thing? I mean, ideally, if you want me to give this thing a 10 out of 10, put a big window here, like a huge front window, and then the two sides and then the one in the kitchen. If you want me to give it like an eight out of 10, at least put some huge windows on the sides here. Not dinky small ones, big windows. And then one right here. It's always nice when you're cooking to be able to kind of look outside and enjoy that. You know, some people will say, well, that's gonna take away from where you put a TV. I don't even know where the TV backer is over here. It might be in this corner, I don't know, but. I'll find a place, put a TV right here. I'll find a place to put a TV or shoot, put it over here on a rocker arm so I can rotate it 
from one side to the other. But that's a big miss. This is such a beautiful option. And even if they put one in the back, imagine if they had a huge window right here and they had a huge window in the front. This unit could probably sell for significantly more than whatever it's currently selling for if it had those windows because it would completely change the dynamic of how you feel when you get in here, how you can envision yourself camping and what it would look like. So add a lot of windows, go overboard, even if you prototype it, just to see what people think. You know, the folks from Free Soul, get in touch with me. I'll work with you on this. I will collaborate with your brand on this to see if we can make this thing amazing. And then we'll see what people think about it. So let's, let's get in touch. You got your two burner cooktop here. You got cabinet storage below. Um, you know, they had the option here to probably put a drawer or maybe even two drawers. So one cabinet, two drawers, I think would have been really, really nice. You have your breaker box down here. You have a nice little uh, wet bath right here. Interesting. It's got an interesting surround, which is kind of deceiving. It actually looks like tile. It really does. But then you feel it and you realize it's not. And that's because of this really dark contrasting tones between the, the graphics. Really nice. But it's a good size wet bath, to be honest with you. You have what appears to be a queen size bed back here. You got a couple windows on each side of it, but these are the only two windows in this unit. There might be one on the door. Uh, I'll tell you when we get out there. You got some storage up here. I think they could have also gone crazy with cool storage locations, cornered storage, you know, maybe a second shelf up here, or maybe some more storage right here. TV's gonna mount right here, I'm sure. You got your sound system, you got your little, looks like a 12 volt refrigerator. Yep. A little sink right here as well. But man, there this is like a blank canvas for me. I would love to collaborate with you guys on this unit. Send me an email. All right, we're gonna step out to the outside of this unit. There's a window. So you have a small window in the door, starting from the front. And I don't know the price on this unit, so we'll have to check their website. Starting from the front, you have a manual front tongue jack. You have a 20 pound propane can. You have a spot here to throw some batteries, maybe some storage, firewood, whatnot. You have a nice upgraded coupler. That's nice. Coming around this way, no awning. So that's the other miss, right? We, sh we should see an awning on here, even if it's a manual awning. Let's throw an awning on this unit. That would look really nice. Also some outside speakers. You might want to set this thing up at the beach and get some nice sound outside. Put a good scene light. You got a light right here. Let's add some more lighting to it. Got this off-road tire right here. This is a Rainier ST tire. This also rides on torsion suspension. So this is such a confusing unit because it's got these really great elements to it. It's just it needs a few more this looks like it's going to be some storage it's got a good size pass through storage down here and it's finished off really nicely from the back got led strip lights right here you got your stabilizer jacks got some more led lights over there that's the other side of your pass through storage you got your dump valve over here outside shower right here City water connection, 30 amp connection right here for your AC. You got the outside of your furnace plus cable, outside of your water heater, fresh water connection. And then that is your AC unit right there. Yeah, I, uh, I see a lot of opportunity here. Solar panel on top, you know, maybe, maybe make those little brush guards going around it. I mean, yeah, it's gonna raise the price, it really will. But here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking you can make this thing very competitive to something like a Black Series, but with a lot more for a heck of a lot less. Um, because if you take this, and if this is our template, we could easily transform this thing into something really, really special with, I'm gonna say a few thousand dollars worth of upgrades. And it, it would absolutely be something that, that people will, will be wowed at whenever they see it going down the road. So yeah, Free Solo, you guys reach out to me on this one. I, I rarely ever say reach out to me to manufacturers, but this is one that I think we could work on because I really see a lot of potential here, a lot of opportunity. Um, and on this specific floor plan, I like the floor plan. Floor plan is perfect for me. So let's keep the floor plan, but let's make some changes to it if you're willing to. But yeah, this thing is super, super cool. Again, I don't know the price on it. I haven't looked it up yet. I'd certainly be interested in, in seeing what it is. I'm gonna guess it's probably gonna be in the mid 20s. It's my theory, maybe the high teens, I don't know, but we'll find out. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, you know, 
it excites me because I see opportunity here. This is kind of like when you see an old beat up rusty classic car and you see what it could be or you see someone convert it into a hot rod. That's how I nerd out on these RVs. I could see this thing being turned into so much more uh, with not very much more in terms of cost being added to it. There will be cost added to it. It will certainly be a more expensive unit when it's done, but it's one you could easily throw up against something like those Winnebago's or even a Black Series. Maybe not in terms of overall off-road prowess, but I think practically speaking and how people would really use it and how they would feel seeing it sitting you know, in their driveway or in their storage, wherever they keep it, or even at a campsite, I think we have a lot of opportunity here. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, and we'll talk to you again very soon.